Hello there. The Brussels Eurocrats are resorting to the bunker mentality of hunkering down in their offices to make their new net zero plans, while the police are outside trying to hold the tractors back and not doing a very good job of it. Farmers in their tractors are running rings around the police while protesting their case against nut zero in the EU. The EU agriculture ministers got together for a meeting in Brussels yesterday, only to be met by 300 tractors and associated farmers from across the whole block descending on the area to protest at the EU's Green New Deal. The Brussels police tried to prevent the farmers getting anywhere near the place, but the tractors went through their barricades like a hot knife through butter. And when approaching the farmers' vehicles that got through the blockade, the police were met with a wall of manure being sprayed at them, leaving them with no option but to retreat. It seems that on the protesting chessboard, the manure sprayer is the rook compared to the pawn of the tear gas grenade. And in one video on Twitter, a single tractor was able to drag away a complete metal and barbed wire police blockade while the officers could only helplessly look on. In fact, from what I've seen of these engagements between tractors and the police, even when using water cannon, the authorities appear clueless in how to deal with them. One tractor driver charged a full water cannon barrage head-on and deposited what looked like a hay bale or two right in front of the police blockade before backing off. And the police seem more worried about getting slurry on their combat-style uniforms or getting them wet than anything else. The farmers also erected their own obstacles of mounds of burning tyres and hay while covering the EU's Lex building with eggs. So the police had to roll out the tear gas as well as the water cannon to try and douse both the protesters and the fires. Chaotic scenes broke out in Brussels with farmers protesting the European Union's green agenda and plans to ink a free trade deal with the South American Mercosur bloc of Argentina, Brazil, Paraguay and Uruguay, which farmers in Europe fear will serve to further undercut their prices and threaten their ability to stay in business, reports Breitbart with some EU officials saying that this looks like a civil war. And there was a similar picture in Spain, where a massive convoy of farmers' tractors advanced on Madrid to do their bit in protesting against Agenda 2030. Farmers are calling for the procedures required to get help from the common agricultural policy to be made more flexible and simplified. They also want health standards for products imported from outside the EU to be standardised to end unfair competition caused by low prices, says the Olive Press. Now, the Spanish Prime Minister, Pedro Sánchez, has announced that he sent a letter to the EU Commission to ask that the justified demands of Spanish farmers be met. But I wonder what the Spanish Agriculture Minister was saying at yesterday's EU Council meeting in Brussels on what the Council itself is calling a crisis situation facing the agricultural sector. Yes, the EU Council is itself saying the agriculture sector is in crisis. Yet they are the ones, together with the EU Commission, who got it there. And, after all this time, they are calling their response rapid and structural. So that's OK then, the farmers can all go back to their farms and all will be well. Somehow I doubt it, because the statement was all within the scope of while ensuring that our environmental sustainability commitments are respected. So I will ask the obvious question. If net zero stands unchanged, how can anything meaningful change? 
That says to me that any measures the EU Council comes up with to help farmers will be short term to placate the agricultural lobby while they find out how to reword their proposals and grease some wheels so as to achieve the same aim as before and hope no one is paying any attention because that's how the EU has always operated. So the EU Council of Agricultural Ministers have come up with their proposals in Brussels while the Spanish PM says he's written to the EU Commission. So when the Spanish farmers get stitched up again, the finger of the Spanish government will be pointed at the EU Commission in Brussels and not at the Spanish PM's own agricultural ministry in Madrid that quietly agreed to it all. Same old, same old. Probably the same story across the whole EU. Accountability was never a strong point where membership of the EU is concerned. Now, the only way these WEF-driven Eurocrats and domestic politicians are going to achieve their net-zero dreams is to shut down traditional agriculture and offshore all the food production. And on the way, the proles are going to have to get used to a very restricted supply of food in both choice and amount. Either that or the establishment is expecting some mechanism to kick in that somehow significantly reduces the number of people in Europe, so that there are far fewer people to feed. Wonder what that mechanism could possibly be. Not sure how powerful that would be, though, given the way both the UK and the EU powers that be are intent on keeping inward migration at as high a level as they possibly can achieve. Or the other alternative is that when the food shortages kick in, which is an inevitability if we allow them to keep driving us down this path, maybe they are convinced that when the hunger kicks in, they can force us to start eating insects and factory-produced Frankenstein meats and dairy. These people really are sickening, aren't they? But at least the people of the EU have the chance to give their politicians a bit of a political kicking when the EU parliamentary elections arrive in June this year, just four months away. And that's the reason why the establishment is eyeing up ways to crack down on dissent. They are desperate for the far right not to dominate election day. In Germany, for example, they're looking at banning what they call the far-right political party, the Alternative for Germany, the AFD, with DW.com reporting that the AFD youth wing, the Young Alternative, could be banned because the authorities deem it to be extremist. And it's believed that the youth wing of the AFD is far more hardline than the main party is and strengthening in its convictions, something that they claim is spilling over into the main body of the party. Now, the youth wing of the AFD is an association of a party, not a part of a political party or a political party in its own right. So Young Alternative could be banned quite easily under German law. But once that's done, presumably the calls will grow from the woke left to ban the AFD as a whole. However, this does beg the question of what happened to the woke educational model of indoctrinating the young in Germany. Surely their educational system was following the globalist orders that all young people must be brainless wokesters. What have their schools and universities been up to all this time? Have their teachers and lecturers been singularly lax where shaping the political mindset of their charges is concerned? Now it's claimed that Young Alternative is basically racist. I don't know how true that is, but if it is is banned, then the AFD could well have their Trump moment and be able to play the victim to an ever-increasing crowd of people who are heartily sick of being fed all this net zero and open borders BS over the years. Are the grand globalist plans starting to unravel? What do you think? Please like, subscribe and comment below. 
and thank you for watching.